Okay, so we talked about the airway anatomy and how the air get, works its way down from the nasopharynx and oropharynx down into the alveoli. So let's talk a little bit about the pulmonary vascular anatomy. Okay, because this is the other side of the coin, right? The, um, the, perp the functional purpose of the lung is to bring together oxygen from the air with the blood so we need um, two, there's two parts of this equation getting the oxygen to the alveoli and getting the blood to the other side of the alveolar membrane right so here I have over here a picture of the pulmonary vascular tree so this person um, received some uh, IV contrast dye just before getting a chest x-ray done and it lights up the entire vascular tree. Now this here is a reconstruct, reconstructed uh, picture of the bronchial tree. Now I wanted to have them side by side. You notice that you have the trachea and the bronchus coming down here but from sort of this central point on these look pretty identical. All right, So we have the two pulmonary arteries the right, the right and the left pulmonary arteries coming out here and they branch and again you know I was trying to make that point that the um, pulmonary arteries um, follow they completely parallel down into the smallest little branches um, the airways okay and you really can see this pictorially in these two pictures now okay so let's talk about the um, the arteries. Okay, here I just want to erase some of these drawings that I have here. So what we have here is the pulmonary arteries coming out of the right ventricle. Right, So we have the right ventricle here and we have the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. Now these large arteries um, are called the pulmonary elastic arteries. So the first set of arteries is called the elastic arteries. So this is true with the, so the same name that we have in the circulatory system. So these elastic, but these elastic arteries are very different than the elastic arteries that we see in, in the circulatory system, in the main systemic circulatory system, because they aren't really thick walled like the aorta is. The pulmonary system is a very low pressure system. So the elastic arteries in the pulmonary system are only 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter thick very very thin walled and this can be a problem for um, patients that have to have surgery to the lungs it's very easy to uh, rupture the pulmonary artery um, so surgeons have to be very careful when they're working inside of the chest the you know on the other hand the aorta is actually very very hard to damage because it is it has such a thick elastic um, membrane okay just to give you an idea of what it might look like an aorta um, you know the aorta is going to have um, you know the a single layer of endothelial cells and then a very thick layer the tunica media is going to be very thick with lots and lots of elastin okay and every once in a while a smooth muscle but mostly elastin right and then it's going to have the um, adventitious layer um, now the difference between um, elastic vessels in the systemic circulation and the elastic vessels in the pulmonary circulation is you know the the um, lumen is going to be about the same size and of course the layer the endothelial layer is one single layer of endothelial cells so the tunica intima is about the same the major difference is going to be the tunica media now the tunica media of the of the elastic pulmonary arteries um, is just very very thin and it has the same elast a lot, lots and lo of elastin in it with a few you know interspersed um, smooth muscle cells and the adventitious layer of connective tissue on the outside is going to be about the same so the major difference between the aorta and you know say the you know the right uh, pulmonary artery is going to be the very thin uh, tunica media Okay, and that is because it's a very low pressure system. 
Okay, now the next um, group of arteries are going to be, you know, when we're out here a little bit further, and um, we've got arteries that are, you know, these, these ones are 0 0.5 to 1 millimeters, and then the second group of, of here, I'm going to use a different color here, the second group of uh, pulmonary arteries are called the muscular pulmonary arteries, just like in the systemic system. And these ones are arteries that are um, 100 to 500 microns thick, or this would be 0 0.1 to 0, uh, 0 0.5 millimeters, right? So muscular, the muscular pulmonary arteries, um, again, are going to be very similar to the muscular pulmonary arteries in the systemic circulation, but again, the tunica media is a little bit thinner. So, and the tunica media here is primarily made up of smooth muscle cells and only has a little bit of elastin. Okay, and um, so there's the thick, smooth, um, the tunica media is made up of, of a very thick, um, smooth muscle layer and then, a, you know, sort of surrounded by a very thin layer of elastin and then you have the adventitious, uh, adventitia on the outside. Then the third type of, ar of arteries in the pulmonary system are the arterioles. Now interestingly enough, the arterioles in the systemic circulation, if you remember correctly, um, have a fairly thick Okay, so if you remember the arterioles in the um, in the systemic circulation um, have a very thick, well, no, I shouldn't say very thick, but a very significant uh, tunica media with some muscles around it, right? And this is very important for controlling um, the blood pressure of the circulatory system. Interestingly enough, in the pulmonary system, there is a tunica media with a little bit of connective tissue and no smooth muscles at all. So arterioles in the pulmonary system have no smooth muscles. Now, there are some exceptions to that. There are some disease states, I should say, except in some diseases. Okay. So again, no smooth muscles in, uh, in the arterioles, so very different. So the arterioles of the pulmonary system really don't have anything to do with pulmonary blood pressure. Um, it's actually the capillaries of the pulmonary system that, um, that make up, that controls the blood pressure of the system. Okay, so that brings us to the fourth pulmonary capillaries. And the capillaries are around 10 microns in size, just about the same size as a red blood cell. And capillaries are just made up of an epithelial layer and a very thin basement membrane. And as you probably remember, the thin basement membrane is actually shared, it's a shared basement membrane with the alveoli. So there's only one basement membrane and then cells on either side of it. Okay, now I kept mentioning that the pulmonary system is a low pressure system. Now blood pressure in the systemic circulation, you know, the average blood pressure for an adult is 120 over 80, right? But pulmonary blood pressure, on the other hand, is usually about 25 over 10 millimeters of mercury. So why is it so much lower? Well, it all has to do with Poisson's law. There are Ton, there are many more capillaries. I think there's about 10 times greater, 10 to 1, um, 10 times greater capillaries in the pulmonary system versus the systemic circulation. So the, um, if you add all the entire cross section, if you add all those capillaries together and make an entire cross section of it, it's going to be um, the cross section of the entire pulmonary system is huge compared to the systemic circulatory, 
circulatory system. Also, if you look at a human being, you know, we've got these long arms and long legs. And then our entire pulmonary vasculature, vascular system is fitting in this short area, whereas the systemic vascular system is very long. Okay, so the pulmonary system the pulmonary system is short and fat and the systemic system is long and skinny. So long and skinny if you think about Poisson's law that pressure that pressure equals length divided by the radius to the fourth power. If you have a short if you have a short fat system you're going to have a much much lower pressure than um, than you would have with a long and skinny system so that is why the pulmonary system is a low is a low pressure system